Hey y'all, so I'm just gonna show the basics of a photoelectric smoke detector and um, I don't intend to use this video to quote unquote copy anybody else's video. This is just me showing how a photoelectric smoke detector works just based on my knowledge and my experience. Uh, this will not cover ionization. Uh, it's just gonna be photoelectric today. So take this off the base. If you have a tamper screw, you'll have to undo that. But this one's actually got these tabs on the side, which actually make it pretty easy to take it off the base. But it was really in there, that's why I had to use both hands. And it'll show right here. Usually right off the bat, you'll be able to tell whether it's ionization or photoelectric. <clears throat> so it shows you the sensitivity range. And um, it says for service return to the manufacturer and uh, disconnect the detector only to control unit initiating device circuit is specified or the system may not operate so that means if you <clears throat> wire this like a four wire detector with a relay in series at the end without any current limiting you'll probably blow it up so yeah let's not blow it up but if we go ahead and um as you can see, I've already done it, but if we push all these tabs, we can take this cover off. And then right there is the detection chamber. And that's the indicator LED, which lights up red whenever the detector has been activated. And right there is the detection chamber. As you can see, you can't see inside, and from inside, you can't see out. So... Basically, this system just comprises of a bunch of baffles along the outside, which pretty much block any ambient light from the room that you're in from getting into the te detector. Because right here, there's a light sensor, and whenever light goes into that sensor, it trips the alarm. So right here is an infrared light, <clears throat> and it goes across this basically the same as an addressable system it pulls it every few seconds and if smoke gets in the smoke particles will actually reflect this kind of like a bunch of mirrors and eventually it'll bounce this beam of light into the light sensor which is going to trip your alarm and that's how photoelectric works and well there's another thing right here this is a test LED right here. So what that does is whenever you put a magnet up to it or if it has a test button and you press it, this will light up. And as you can see, it is directly across from the light sensor with nothing blocking the beam of light. So with these, you're pretty much safe because you know that if the test function works, then the detector itself works. And this is good to know for, you know, fire marshals. You know, a lot of people don't really know how these things work. Not many people do. Uh, it took me a little while to understand the concept of how these things work. And I'll show you how to put this back together too. You just snap that back on, make sure it's rotated right. And then this only goes on one way because it's got the hole for the LED. And um, I don't recommend wiring this like a four wire detector with a relay in series. Because you can wire it to be like a four wire detector by doing that. But they're not supposed to be wired that way. And um, yeah, let's not do that. So, but this one is four wire. You can see there's this little module on the back, which is probably just a um, accessory base. That's probably all this is. So, yeah, that's how photoelectric works. And it's able to detect um, larger particles from, like, smoldering fires, you know, that put out large chunks of smoke. So uh, they're typically more dangerous because, you know, you get that in your lungs and uh, you're not going to have a good day. So that's why photoelectric is around. There's a purpose for photoelectric and ionization. Ionization is mostly found in homes, 
photoelectric is mostly found in commercial appliances. So that's the basics of this detector for you. This pretty much applies to any photoelectric smoke detector. <clears throat> so I hope y'all learned something and uh, hope it can help at some point in the future. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to y'all soon.